everybody just uh, wanted to answer some common questions and kind of go over what my company does. Uh, my name is Forrest, and I own Forrester Fuels and Fire. Um, so yeah, it's, here's some common questions for you. What does Forestry Fuels and Fire do? So Forestry Fuels and Fire is a brush and tree management company, land management company, um, that also provides some fire services to my customers after and if they, you know, have this kind of work done. Um, we have a fire truck, or fire tank on the service truck over there. Um, we have this little mini mite, the 333 with the forestry mulching head on it, and then uh, coming soon, hopefully, a big 300 horsepower tired mulcher that'll do anywhere from a 16 inch pine, it's bigger than this guy here, and down. Um, just mulch it up and leave it kind of like the stuff that you see on the ground over here, just tiny pieces of wood. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty awesome. It has turned out great so far on every project I've been on. I've had a lot of uh, happy customers. All right, why is it important to manage brush and trees? Uh, that's the natural thing to do. Uh, nature wants it done by itself already, especially, you know, we're kind of up here in the Rockies, Northern Rockies and uh, Montana here, and fire is Mother Nature's broom and dustpan. Unfortunately, fire impacts our daily lives much too severely to just let it go through and burn whenever Mother Nature wants it to. Um, there's too many houses too many roads, schools, everything else, we can't just let the fires burn. So next best option is to come in and manage, you know, the forests and the brush ourselves. Um, and it has to be done or you'll get the fires that we're currently having across the country, which are massive in scale and really extreme in fire behavior. They are complete stand replacement fires, which means it takes a hundred years of growth in these trees and takes it all the way back to the plains. Um, and even in some cases, there was some fires in Washington and California that uh, they sterilize the soil. They don't let any, nothing will grow in some of those places for 20 to 50, even 100 years, depending on how bad the burn was and how hot it was. So either we can come in and do this, or Mother Nature will do it for us, and most of the time we don't like the outcome of that. So this looks better, has huge benefits for wildlife, water resources, uh, a sustainable forest that'll survive moderate wildfires um, looks I mean, it, personally I think it looks great once it you know is all parked out and uh, you know, cleaned up and then access a lot of my customers have said that the thing they like the most about it is that they can access places on their property that they never could before or could 15 years ago but now can't and after I come in and clean all the brush and deaden down and everything else out um, they can get back into their property again. Awesome. What are some other methods to treat um, forests? So there's this is mastication or forestry mulching. There's logging which I do a little bit of both. Mostly the stuff that I do is by hand. Um, if there's bigger trees that I can't mulch down. Um, so mastication, logging, broadcast chipping is another one. So you take a wood chipper, you shove all the material into it, and it sprays out into specific areas. Um, and slash piling and burning is another way. You can take these trees and just rip them all out of the ground, make giant piles. Uh, I will say that when you do that, 
the piles generally tend to be bigger than houses. Um, you're not leaving these logs if you're just piling and burning. These logs, everything just goes into a pile and it gets burned. Um, one of the things, I highly dislike burn piles. I don't think that they need to be at all. It's better for the soil, it's better for the atmosphere, it's better for everybody if all of this woody debris gets mulched up or chipped up and spread back onto the ground again. It holds water, it helps carbon composition in the soil, which is something you have to have for grass um, and the bugs and everything likes a higher carbon composition in the soil. So I really don't like slash piles and I don't like the way they look, but that is another method to do it. Um, depending, it can potentially be cheaper, but for the most part, mastication forestry mulching is one of the cheapest methods out there for uh, getting brush and trees cleaned up. You already mentioned several of the benefits, but what are some other benefits that your customers may enjoy from their property having you come in? Um, <clears throat> one of the other benefits is view. Um, a lot of people have commented that they didn't know that they would have a view of the mountains or the hills or the river nearby. Um, it, <clears throat> when, you, when everything is grown up and got limbs sticking out everywhere, you really can't see. A lot of the places I've done, you couldn't see more than 15 or 20 feet or even five feet into the forest. And once you get in and clean all of the extra vegetation out, you can see. And that's uh, been one of the big benefits that a lot of people have talked about. And being able to see wildlife too. Um, bears, if you're out walking, people want to be able to see them and avoid them. Snakes, same thing. Um, be able to see the deer and the elk that you know are in there, but they were always in there, so you couldn't see them before. <clears throat> Why do you think your clients like working with you? Um, <clears throat> I think mostly just because I believe in integrity and being honest. If there's a better way to do your specific property, I'll tell you, I'll be straight up with you on exactly what we're going to do and how much it's going to cost. And I'm not going to change the plans unless you ask me to. Um, and they like my product. You know, I'm really easy to work with. I won't, you know, tell you that I won't do something because you want, you know, I don't think it's the right thing to do, but I'll tell you there's a better way to do it if that's what you want. Um, yeah, I just think uh, I just am really straightforward and upfront with people and provide a really good product. And many people don't know that you actually have extensive fire experience. How does that play into your role in this business? Um, yeah, so I fought fire professionally for the government for 11 years. Um, probably clocked over 20,000 hours on fires, watching fire behavior, <clears throat> seeing the before and the after of fires and both why it's bad in certain scenarios and why it's good in others. Um, and I have figured out over time that essentially what we were doing in the fire service you know, putting out these wildfires isn't necessarily the best long-term solution to the problem of wildfires impacting people's homes. Um, and that's why I wanted to start this company and why I'm doing this now is so I can take that experience that I gained from fighting fire and doing this kind of work for the government and coming out and doing it directly for landowners because I feel it makes much more of a long-term impact and really helps the security of a neighborhood when people do this stuff to give firefighters time to fight the fire. Um, 
that's, I guess, one of the other benefits is that firefighters have a time crunch. If your property is too thick to fight the fire on, they're not going to fight the fire there. Um, and I know this, as, you know, because I was a firefighter. And I've had to tell people, hey, sorry, we're, we're going to be over there. You need to evacuate because we can't protect your house. So um, that experience has really lended me everything to be able to do this business and um, provide this service to people. I think that would provide a great peace of mind for your clients. The last question I have for you is a lot of people may be concerned that this kind of work will be too expensive. What can you tell them about that? It is not near so expensive as a lot of people might think. Um, I've had people sit there and say, well, you know, is my 20 acres going to cost me 45 grand to go get cleared? Well, not necessarily. Um, it can, this kind of stuff can range anywhere from, you know, $100 an acre to go out and clear sagebrush because it's really easy, it's really fast, all the way up to, you know, $2,000 or $5,000. There's places in Colorado that they're trying to do cliffs and hillsides above people's homes for $16,000. So it really ranges all over. But I'll say that the easiest ground is what should be concentrated on. If it's hard to get to and really expensive, it's not worth working on. Because you can't stop a fire and you can't slow down a fire on a 75% grade or even a 45% slope. You're not going to have much success in, in checking it up there. So doing around your house, doing the ridge tops and the valley bottoms is the place to concentrate. And those places are generally a lot easier and a lot cheaper to do. So even if you think, well, maybe, you know, that's way too expensive, I'll do it myself. You know, we can get a lot done in a day's work with this machine and even more with the bigger machine. So what might take you two years to go clear out yourself with a chainsaw, this thing could probably do in a couple days. Um, and for way cheaper than you might think. Um, I will say the bigger the project, the cheaper the price per acre. Um, obviously transportation and gas is a huge factor. So if you can get your neighbors on board and say you and a couple neighbors all get together and say, hey, we want to do, you know, 10 or 20 acres a piece. Well, then I can bring in a bigger piece of equipment that will leave the same end product but is much more efficient and do it for a much cheaper price for all of you than if I just came in to do five acres with this machine. Because I have to transport it to the job and then run back and forth to the job commute every day, which can be extremely expensive, and then transport the smaller machine back. So, you know, a job that might only take two or three days is actually going to take me five or six after transportation and supplies and everything else. So just something to keep in mind. If you can get your neighbors on board and do the larger projects, it ends up being cheaper per acre for everybody to do it that way. That way. Great. I think that's all we have for you today. Be sure and like and follow and subscribe to Forestry Fields and Fire. Hey, thanks everybody. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email, check out the website. Um, yeah, any questions, just give me a call. Thank you.